In the past few years, an increasing number of business leaders have been exposed for dishonesty and other forms of bad behavior. Hi everyone, Nemo here. Before we go any further, I have to thank Reddit user Devils Ravioli, who put me onto this talk and has allowed me to use their great analysis in creating this video. I've linked their post just below the like button. Now the talk you just heard was given by Richard C. Edgeley in the April 2006 General Conference. It's fair to say his talk, entitled Three Towels and a 25 Cent Newspaper, is focused on the principles of honesty and integrity. When we are true to the sacred principles of honesty and integrity, we are true to our faith, and we are true to ourselves. He starts his talk by telling the story of a time when, as a young man, he was working at a hotel. He took three towels without permission as a memento of his time working at the hotel. His father was gravely disappointed, and Edgley drove 85 miles back to return them. This was an expensive and a painful lesson on honesty that has stayed with me throughout my life. He says the lesson has stayed with him his entire life, but has it? To answer this question, I think it's worth looking at Richard C. Edgley's church career. Richard C. Edgley was the second counselor on the presiding bishopric from 1992 to 1995. He was first counselor of the presiding bishopric from 1995 to 2012. All this came after 12 years as the managing director of the church's finance and records department. This means he most certainly oversaw the formation of Enzyme Peak Advisors in 1997. Given what we know about Enzyme Peak Advisors and the $5 million settlement that they and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints made made with the SEC, it's particularly ironic when Edgley says, Sadly, some of the greatest missing values in today's world are honesty and integrity. In the past few years, an increasing number of business leaders have been exposed for dishonesty and other forms of bad behavior. Richard C. Edgley wins the Things That Haven't Aged Well award this week. Always this dishonesty and lack of integrity is based on greed, arrogance, and disrespect. In Proverbs we read, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Yes, that's right. The man who oversaw the creation of the first limited liability company in 2001 that was responsible for filing Enzyme Peak's 13F forms gave that talk. One year before giving this talk, the SEC order tells us, on March 15th, 2005, the church became aware that the public might link this first LLC to the church because the person signing the Forms 13F was listed in a public directory as a church employee. To address this issue, on March 21st, 2005, the senior leadership of the church approved a new reporting entity to be created, with better care being taken to ensure that neither the street nor the media could connect the new entity to Enzyme Peak. These LLCs are what have been referred to by some as shell companies, and they are what the church and Enzyme Peak use to hide the amount and nature of Enzyme Peak's assets. These March 2005 meetings culminated in the second LLC being created. On December 1st, 2005, Enzyme Peak formed a second LLC as a Delaware non-profit corporation, located in Wilmington, and named Enzyme Peak's managing director as its general manager. Enzyme Peak then filed Forms 13F in the name of this new LLC. The second LLC was made just four months before Edgley said, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. I don't understand how he could be saying this sincerely, how he can view himself as dealing truly when he is involved in setting up LLCs in order to hide the true nature and size of Enzyme Peak's assets, not just from the reporting authorities and the public at large, but from the church's own members. The SEC order makes it clear that, as referenced in this order, senior leadership of the church consists of the church's first presidency and presiding bishopric. Throughout its history, at least once each year, Enzyme Peak's managing director met with the senior leadership of the church to discuss Enzyme Peak's activities, including at times the LLC structure. Unanimous approval from the senior leadership of the church was required before Enzyme Peak could deviate from the LLC structure and file Forms 13F in Enzyme Peak's own name. So it is safe to say Richard C. Edgley, as a member of the presiding bishopric, was in the room and had a vote when it came to these decisions. According to the SEC order, decisions around the LLC structure required Edgley's sustaining vote. The church has also made a point of telling us in the past that the senior councils of the church work by unanimous vote. There's no trading. Well, I'll give you this issue if you give me that issue. This is not political. There must be unanimity among all 15 in the First Presidency and the 12 for something to have full force and efficacy. 
There is then no room within the church's own narrative structure or the findings of the SEC order for Edgley to have stood against these decisions in any meaningful way that did not ultimately have him going along with it, because if he had stood against it, they wouldn't have been able to happen. There will never be honesty in the business world, in the schools, in the home, or any place else until there is honesty in the heart. Does Edgley not have honesty in his heart then? Because he was involved in dishonest management of the business arm of the LDS Church. There was certainly honesty in the hearts of the LLC managers that quit once they became aware of what the church was asking them to do. Two business managers resigned their roles, voicing concerns about what they had been asked to do. Rather than change the LLC structure, two new business managers were assigned to replace the two who resigned. Honesty is the basis of a true Christian life. For Latter-day Saints, honesty is an important requirement for entering the Lord's Holy Temple. Honesty is embedded in the covenants that we make in the temple. I have no idea how Edgley was able to attend the temple while actively engaged in this kind of behavior. Also, if the LDS Church wants to be more Christian, there is one thing we would not like anyone to wonder about. That is whether or not we are Christians. And if honesty is the basis for a true Christian life, then the church's financial behavior is a huge barrier to their desire to be viewed as Christians by their own standards. Each Sunday, as we partake of the holy emblems of the Savior's flesh and blood, we again renew our basic and sacred covenants, which encompass honesty. As Latter-day Saints, we have a sacred obligation to not only teach the principles of honesty, but also to live them, perhaps with examples as simple as three towels or a 25-cent newspaper. Honesty should be among the most fundamental values that govern our everyday living. Why did honesty not govern the management of the Enzyme Peak Fund, if it is to be among the most fundamental values that govern our everyday living? My prayer is that as Latter-day Saints, we will be known as among the most honest people in the world. And it might be said of us, as it was of the people of anti-Nephi-Lehi, that we are perfectly honest and upright in all things. The SEC order and the financial behavior of the LDS Church and Enzyme Peak that it uncovered is directly in conflict with his prayer that as Latter-day Saints, we will be known as among the most honest people in the world. If the senior leadership of this church, and that includes Edgley, cannot exemplify honesty in their financial dealings and more broadly in their public addresses. Let me say about electric shock treatments at BYU. I became president of BYU. That had been discontinued earlier and it never went on under my administration. Then it is very unlikely that Latter day Saints will be known as amongst the most honest people in the world. This talk by Richard C. Edgley is yet another example of the senior leadership of this church apparently being fine with expecting high standards of honesty from their members and yet being unwilling to be held to those standards themselves. I sent Dan Lay Jokes a three and a half thousand word document at his request for him to investigate the instances of public dishonesty by senior church leaders. You can check out his response in the link below, and while you're down there, feel free to like this video and consider consider becoming a monthly donor so I can continue to provide this content. Church leaders apply this same double standard of living one way and expecting another thing from the members when it comes to repentance. Repentance is one of the first principles of the gospel and is essential to our temporal and eternal happiness. It is much more than just acknowledging wrongdoings. It is a change of mind and heart that gives us a fresh view about God, about ourselves, and about the world. It includes turning away from sin and turning to God for forgiveness. Along with confessing our sins to God, we must do our best to fix all that has been affected by our action, whether that involves apologizing, telling the truth, or repairing physical damage. In contrast to this, here is Dan H. Jokes' opinion on apologies. The church doesn't seek apologies, he said, and we don't give them. Edgley himself did not turn away from sin and turn to God for forgiveness because several years later in 2011, Enzyme Peak became concerned that its portfolio had become so large that the Form 13F filings it made using the name of the second LLC might attract unwanted attention and sought the church's approval to form additional LLCs to file Forms 13F. On May the 19th, 2011, the church's senior leadership approved Enzyme Peak's recommendation to clone the second LLC to create new Form 13F filers. 
After obtaining church approval, Enzyme Peak formed new clone LLCs for the purposes of filing Forms 13F. Five new entities were formed and given Delaware addresses, although none conducted business in Delaware. Right up until the end of his time in the presiding bishopric, Richard C. Edgeley was still involved with dishonest filing practices that would ultimately end up with senior church leaders being exposed for dishonesty and other forms of bad behavior by the SEC. The church said in their statement after the release of the SEC order, question, did Enzyme Peak fail to comply with SEC regulations? Answer, we reached resolution with the SEC, we affirm our commitment to comply with the law, regret mistakes made, and now consider the matter closed. Not only did they fail to answer a direct question, a question that they posed to themselves, but there is no repentance here, just a carefully worded statement of regret. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments, but personally, I consider this matter to be anything but closed.